Hello guys, this is Alex Koloskov and uh, we're going to review uh, the submissions for latest uh, assignment for Studio Tabletop Photography for Beginners course and uh, well it was quite, quite a time uh, since I posted uh, the lesson and well we kind of now in really slow pace I would say but uh, this is how well this is how it is so we have to go uh, like this. So I'm going to share my screen for the forum or with the forum and uh, yeah you've seen the ideas uh, I got here on uh, my tutorial right and uh, the main idea was to create non-flat look of uh, the shoes of textured subject meaning it's easy you know uh, on matte textured surface to create uh, any kind of gradient to make it not flat, meaning bright, dark, and bright again, or opposite. And let's see how we did it. Chris, Chris was first uh, who submitted, and uh, yeah, they look pretty cool. Uh, I don't look at the actual shape of the shoes, Chris, because you see, I mean, it's supposed to be like if it's gonna be an advertisement shot or just a product shot. Obviously, they, uh, you know, they need to be uh, kind of not worn or uh, that uh, lace is to be, you know, as nice as possible, right? But uh, overall, you got it right, uh, regardless of the lace. Uh, the background is not, uh, you notice it, it's not uh, good because it has a lot of wrinkles. And you said it's both 15 feet, but you see F... Uh, 16 or F14 uh, might be just too too deep depth of field. What if you would try to shoot F8, for example, or if F6.3? Uh, it may not be uh, well. It still may be the issue with the, the ground because it's really, really, really uh, you know has a lot of wrinkles. But it may at least make them a little bit blurry. Another thing which I can suggest about the background, usually when the ground is not, uh, you know, is not right, inter I mean, not flat enough, uh, we can always try to highlight it with more like normal angle than sharp. Meaning, if we hit light with this, it will be less uh, possibility to see the wrinkles on it, right? Because wrinkles won't have any shadows. If we hit it with light like this or like that. Uh, all the you know unevenness of the surface uh, will become more visible because we have uh, all the mm, shadows from it. Same basically for people faces, right? When we shoot uh, with some kind of ring flash, it looks all smooth regardless of how uneven the face is. Cool for you know for girls after thirty. <laughs> I would say. Anyway, it's just a tip. Let me see how. Uh, yeah. That's what probably happened with you. You see uh, the background light, it was about 45 degree angle, right? And that's what created uh, a lot of uh, shadows from that wrinkles. If you try to raise it uh, a little bit higher, maybe it will be better. You know, the f best way actually to do this, how I would do this, having that big studio as you have, I would put a white background, white translucent plastic as a background and have uh, light behind it to create a spot. It will be right hit, right? And uh, given this distance, there won't be any spill from the light you have for the subject to the background, meaning it will be dark, it will be black with white spot in it. Well, or gray spot, whatever, regardless of the, I mean, depending on the power you put. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Nice shows. You you got this uh, re really good highlights and shadow, which made them look non-flat. You see, it's bright here, then it goes dark, and then bright again. Same here. The only thing I would uh, add or change is I would make, especially for the shoe on white, you see it's a little bit darker, a little bit too dark on white. For black it's fine, but for white, you know, they look uh, a little bit darker. So I went to Photoshop and uh, did this my little trick. Uh, we can actually continue because I just started. So I have the adjustment la layer with levels. 
and I'm gonna make white a little bit brighter the oops there's something else sorry yeah now it's become brighter uh, the bottom of the shoes right because that's they're white the bottom and you have it kind of a little bit a uh, little bit too dark at least for my taste so I made it a little bit brighter you see there are, can be different techniques to do this uh, dodge and burn kind of thing but and you see so we went from this to this not much but just a little bit brighter and that's the only thing I would add Obviously, the shape, like I said, the shape of the shoes should be much better. You need to put something inside to make like this, uh, the bottom one. It's flat, you know, it's... You can make it uh, better uh, looking by stuffing it. So it's basically like styling, styling the shot. You didn't have a stylist and you did it yourself. And now I'm concentrating more on the light, okay? But for the real shot, make sure that you know how to do it or hire somebody to do it for you. Because if it will be for client, it won't be accepted I would say okay and by the way I, I like the idea of uh, this creative shot uh, you know on the motherboards or whatever any kind of boards it's maybe not motherboard but network maybe switchboard which is kind of cool you see I got some other idea I played a little bit and I got this picture on Google images I don't know and I adjusted it slightly and added uh, it was you know few minutes uh, fix so it's kind of look ugly in terms of you know how I clipped out the black background but you see on your shot uh, the bottom was kind of much brighter and not really balanced because the background was completely dark if we uh, would do something like this right and we actually can make uh, dark background yes this one please and then go to this layer and make it a little bit darker so imagine image like this you know kind of cool when the ground has some bokeh maybe some little stuff which kind of look cool okay it's just idea it's whatever strike in my head i kind of gave it showed it to you guys so chris good job thank you let's move to the next one uh burned burned you get some something but it's really dark i don't know you have this one light from left side and then you add one right from from the right one in one light and it's not big difference for some reason you have it's really dark yeah time to go <laughs> um, i'll continue in after we got kids from school <laughs> anyway um uh, let me finish now so we have this a little bit, little bit dark. I don't know. It's a little bit too dark. Mm, looks like just intensity of light is not enough, at least on my monitor. And uh, this is better when you get some light and reflector on top. And while I like uh, the idea, I think it's still a little bit too flat. You see, um, maybe because it's not really well. It's a little bit glossy, or you don't have uh, you know the separation of the light enough but it's a little bit too flat and uh, actually same here I see texture I see some stuff but you see there is no darker and brighter areas they look flat I like actually very uh, very much the background the spot uh, you know very nice but uh, let me go here I just did a little adjustment you see what I did it's again dodge and burn technique it you should do it with lighting, but I just showing you uh, what kind of thing you can do. So you see what I did. I made uh, the middle darker, and here, and I made uh, the bottom and top brighter. And at least this kind of thing will give you more shape, more volume of the subject. Uh, and like I said, it's usually uh, better to be done with the lighting when you have those three boxes more sharper uh, angle from both sides to highlight only top of the uh, on the shoe for example right or you can do well you can do it all in production I did dodge and burn here easy okay so let me see here again it's I don't know it's probably your monitor not calibrated right it's really dark and talking about this 
uh, it's really not that textured it's a glossy and with glossy it's completely different well not completely but different approach uh, you've seen those other shoes which I posted on Pro Corner, right? Well, you didn't see the mm, tutorial because you're not Pro Corner member, but you've seen the result. And I can tell you that uh, I use the same strip boxes, but uh, with much sharper angle to create, you know, only rim lights for glossy stuff. And uh, well, it's a little bit different than here than this textured. So this is the final image. Like I said, looks cool, but uh, I would really want to see more highlights and uh, dark areas to, to create a little bit more dramatic look. Uh, other than that, pretty solid work. Thank you. Okay, uh, Viva, I'll continue in a moment. Okay, uh, let's continue uh, on the review. So, Viva submitted these shots, uh, some kind of nice cowboy type of shoes and uh, sneakers and you see <coughs> we were this um, kind of interesting shot I'm talking about these shoes uh, but uh, they're not really textured if you uh, if I would evaluate them as a textured subject they probably uh, more like a glossy subject with a lot of threads and you know a lot of uh, you know little pieces which kind of ex add texture but to shoot uh, shoes like this, uh, we need to utilize similar but a little bit different approach uh, than uh, from what we use on this, because more because it's like glossy. There are a lot of glossy uh, parts on these uh, shoes, and uh, we need to have you know we need to basically create rim lights, rim lights uh, all around, and then have some uh, reflector on front to have some nice, uh, you know, to, to show the mm, the product, but still to have dramatic look. So I'm not going to cover it right now, okay, because it's a little bit different from what we, we got. It's, uh, well, it's cool uh, to go through everything, but it won't be just, a, you know, tabletop studio photography for beginners. It will be just a huge course. And I want to keep this for beginners, so we kind of go in, you know, uh, textured subjects now. But speaking of this shot, I also not sure about composition. Uh, probably, well, it's hard to imagine that uh, any brand or merchandise uh, would put shoes on the advertisement when it's shot this way. Okay, I understand that what you why you did this. You want to show the you know the product like front and back of it, but in general it doesn't work this way. Uh, the composition is kind of uh, a little bit crazy okay <laughs> it just you know my opinion again I am not a stylist but uh, from what I've seen you know on uh, on advertisements and then other photographers portfolios I can tell you this so let's go to these two shots uh, it's bad that I well I can click on this one as I intend this is more like a creative shot and uh, this more like a straight shot right and you see I like the background, uh, nice, well, both uh, uh, planes, vertical and horizontal, but the lighting is a little bit, you see, it doesn't really create the volume, it's a little bit flat, similar to previous uh, few shots which I kind of uh, already pointed, right? It's a little bit flat, and while this one looks more interesting because of this, uh, probably it's kind of HDR effect, right? You run it through some HDR software, that's why we see all this hollows on, you know, the, the, all the crazy stuff which uh, HDR does. It looks interesting, but again, uh, to create the volume, we need to have highlights, shadows, and lights, and shadows. That's what I was doing uh, on the in Photoshop. Let me see if I did anything like this now. I didn't do for the for your shows, but the idea is exactly the same, exactly the same as uh, for previous one. We need to have, for example, these ones need to be brighter, brighter than than it is now. They a little bit too too dark. And uh, why don't you create, you know, highlights from both sides like I showed you? Remember, let's go to to my examples. You see, I have bright area here, right? Then it goes to dark, darker, darker, and then bright again. And then some pieces bright again. Same here, it's bright where it uh, laces, right? Then it goes darker, at least here. And then dark, and then some highlights. So all this uh, 
you know, transformation between light and dark gives it the value of the volume, gives it the shape of the product. Actually, Chris did good here, you see? Bright and dark and bright again. And uh, this is what you you are missing here, okay? So it tells me, I don't see the lighting setup for these shoes, but it tells me that you, you didn't put, um, let's say, two strip boxes on the sides far enough behind the subject to create those kind of uh, transitions, okay? And that's why it's kind of a little bit flat. And yeah, speaking of this uh, glossy shoe, it's a little bit different. I would move this strip box more to the back, still being on the side, but I'll move more towards the background. And then I will definitely move this light again to the same side, more towards the back. And this light I would probably, well, I would put some diffuser close to the our subject and uh, highlight, creating some gradient on the diffuser. And this gradient would highlight the subject without killing texture, without killing the, you know, those highlights. Meaning it will be low power kind of reflection. It's just a thoughts for you. Okay, so thank you, Viva. Let's move to the next one. Olga, Olga. <laughs> Uh, Olga сделала отличные фотографии. So I'm saying that Olga did very good uh, job here. Uh, nice uh, shots. And uh, while we have here transitions between darker and brighter areas, I would add more. It's a little bit, um, you know, there is not much contrast, and I think it's a little bit darker. Maybe it's my monitor, but again, I, I always use the set same settings uh, to to work on my shots and to review other shots and to go through internet just to, you know, for inspiration and, you know, it should be the same level of, um, you know, brightness. Here it's kind of a little bit darker than usual, so that's what I'm saying. And I went to Photoshop and I did a little uh, adjustment here. So this is how it is. And I did use just a layer, you know, Dodge and Burn technique. I highlighted more some areas and uh, did I do any dark? I didn't even add any darkness. Basically I highlighted some areas and you see the difference. For me it looks uh, much brighter and much, uh, well, more interesting than this. So the only thing uh, Olga you missed is a little bit more highlights. A little bit more highlights. Uh, for example, what I would do here, get those strip boxes, not like this but straight. Uh, get them a little bit closer to the subject, to your shooting table. And, uh, well, even doing things like this may add highlights here and uh, still be relatively good dark areas here. If it becomes too dark, because when you move a little bit closer to the subject, those strip boxes, uh, we may expect that areas which are not highlighted uh, will be darkened because of this, right? So always uh, think about, well, you can always have uh, some uh, reflector somewhere right to the subject in front. So it obviously won't be in, in the frame. And uh, that little reflector, let's say white reflector or silver if you need more lights, will highlight uh, those areas and it will be still much uh, darker than other areas. So it will be, you know, the transition between bright and dark. But, uh, well, it's a fix uh, for, for two dark areas, right? Just additional reflector, not even light, just a reflector. Okay? And, uh, yeah, this uh, <laughs> creative shot, I see. Uh, well, you know, I'm not sure, same like you said, I'm not sure how creative it is in terms of, you know, composition. Uh, it's, uh, it kind of look a little bit strange to me. I would probably prop them with, you know, if I put something on the background, a little bit more blurry. Uh, in terms of creative shot, I really like uh, Chris and I shot. And uh, yeah, I like it uh, with my edition like this, not on just black background, not on, sorry, white background or black, was it black? Anyway, yeah, it was black. So uh, that kind of propping uh, works well. You see, we have some something on the front uh, where we see the you know other stuff and we see some blurred stuff uh, on the background and uh, yeah the zero shot you just add some one more subject and it's kind of not really clear what is going on there but anyway I'm not uh, teaching you guys to to prop 
and to style your shots because that's not what the goal of this course. We learn in the light. We learn the technique on how to use the light to, to create um, well product shots, dramatic and good looking product shots. Okay. So спасибо, Оля. Хорошая работа. Чуть-чуть больше контраст. A little bit more contrast, a little bit more drama for Olga and uh, uh, it will be really good. I mean it's really good. It, it is, but there is always uh, areas to improve. Okay. So thank you. Let's move to uh, Kim, Kimberly. Okay, very nice and clean shot. I really like it. I really like it. I like the background. Uh, you see this kind of uh, very smooth gradient, no wrinkles. By the way, about the background, I forgot to mention here that this kind of background doesn't look right to me, Viva. Okay, I just forgot because of a lot of wrinkles. So this, you see the difference, like clean, right? If you talk, think about product, think how the client would like to see it. As clean, you know, it's nice background with, you know, perfect kind of shape. Here it's, for example, very nice shape of the sneakers. Uh, nothing, uh, you know, collapsed uh, like on uh, Chris and I shot when it was collapsed. So uh, that's good. This is really good. The only thing, again, it's a little bit too flat. You see, Kim, while we have very nice light in here, it's a little bit flat and it's kind of uh, doesn't add the drama which kind of uh, we are looking to to create because you see the brightness of this area and brightness and brightness it's all the same so it's a little bit better on this uh, on this side on the bottom of this shoe we have at least some darker and brighter area but this one looks too flat I did little I think I did it yeah I did little adjustments you see what I did this is how you have it here I, I touched only the right one the right shoes I use dodge and burn technique again, exactly the same what you supposed to do with the lighting. And what I did, I highlighted more this area, then I add shadow in the middle and then highlight again. And I brightened a little bit the, the bottom. Or well, yeah, I didn't I didn't touch the bottom. So here it's more volume, it's uh, more interesting look than this, because this is too flat. Okay? And that's what exactly what we're supposed to do with the lighting. And what we have is lighting here. Oh yeah, well, I was kind of walking with this shoe. Let me see. We have one on top. One here and one here. So it tells me that you have this, for example, this three box which is on the left. It's a little bit too, too much on the front move it so it will be more vertical than horizontal and uh, even doing this kind of rotation may add drama to, to your shoe, to this one okay uh, the top may be not highlighted too much again uh, the area uh, or at least the power you put on the uh, top strip box maybe it was too much because I think that's what equalizes uh, completely the brightness of the shoe Make sure that you have uh, different power and well, you see I never record any uh, power ratio because I just look at the picture and kind of decide. But the idea is, you get the idea, right? Darker, brighter, darker, brighter. And uh, that's what we do with light. We can only do it in Photoshop, but well, yeah, photographers first, retoucher second, okay? And yeah, speaking about this light, which I see the spotlight on the right from the shoe, I would definitely, definitely move it more towards the background to be on the side just be right on the side don't move it uh, to the front and hit it this area with it highlight it it will be bright and nice well obviously not too much and then it will be dark and nice and then well sorry and then it will go darker and then brighter again so exactly what I did in, in Photoshop you can even have more dramatic look here okay because well in Photoshop there is always more limitations than we have uh, oops, I, did, I think I hit something wrong. Yeah, we don't need this guy. Okay, other than that, Kim, uh, very good, very good job. So, thank you. Okay, yeah, and yeah, I love this. I love the background. First I see, oh, well, you, you, you went to outside and put it somewhere, you know, in front of the trees or whatever. 
And then when you explain how you did this, how you created this background, it's brilliant. I love it. This kind of thing which uh, we, if photographer knows how to, you know, create, uh, how to mimic nature or any type of background in studio, it's it's big plus. It's a big plus. Like uh, with that food shot, uh, it's always when we shoot in studio, if we know how to create, you know, that sunny, bright uh, type of look and on the background, like it was a mirror, or sorry, the window, it's a big plus. And here it's kind of cool. So, awesome. And again, I love the details. Sharpness and details of the shoe is very good. And that's what, uh, Viva, you missed a little bit somehow. I don't see the sharpness here. Here it's kind of lost completely, it's blurred. And again, it's maybe cool for you know, landscape photography, like early Trey Radcliffe uh, shots, now he's doing a really sharp and nice job, but uh, early it was a lot of blur, while it was fine uh, with uh, landscaping, for product photography it's not a good idea. Okay, so let me, I think I jumped too much, hmm. somehow I missed Dave Collins, or Oh, no, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, you fixed the background, you fixed, uh, you see, Olga, you made it white, uh, which is really cool. But still, you see, we need more highlights. More highlights on this, especially on white background. It's, everything is too dark here. Similar as uh, Chris and I had, I think, on the white, and uh, many of you guys. If you shoot on a white background, make sure that the subject doesn't really kind of look too dark. You can always increase power or do a little bit post-production tricks to make it a little bit brighter and you know. Okay, but yeah, the background is much better, Olga. Okay, David. Red, black and white. Nice. <laughs> um, David, I think most of what I've said before is applies to you. Even though we have some highlights, we have, um, I mean, it's not flat, which is cool, but uh, I think it could be done a little bit, a little bit better in terms of creating that, you know, gradation, because like here, let's look at the left shoe, we see the threads on top, I mean the laces, or how I call it, uh, I would add more light, I would add more light where you have that strip box, show it to me, or well, yeah, I see this big soft box behind. So I would create a strip box from it. I, I will cover uh, with black screen half of it. I will move it uh, lower so it will hit like this and create some nice, nice reflections over here. Talking about this area, okay? That's what I will do. I will maybe, uh, well, this light is fine. Just make sure that it's hitting more this than this. Okay, more hitting, hitting uh, right shoot more than left. If need, you need to uh, create. Well, you have sock on it, so it's not really a spot. It's more like diffuse light. That's why you have everything flat. For example, on this one, it's too dark and it's too flat. Same issue here. You remember, it should be a spot, really small spot. Whatever you put in the front, when you use light to highlight something textured like this, from the front, from the side of the camera. Make sure it's just a spot. It's very hard light, and you can position somewhere to put, well, to highlight some... You, you've seen on my lesson, right? That's how we not... We, we still can keep a uh, dramatic look and have still, still have that uh, gradation between bright and dark. If you put anything diffused like this, boom, we have flat, flat look. We have flat look. You increase power, it will be just, you know, brighter, but still flat. Okay? And this light, why you have it this way? Why it's pointed toward the background? Move it a little bit close to the background, rotate it so it will be hitting a little bit from behind. It will be hitting this right shoe a little bit from behind. And it will, again, it will create ni hi nice highlights over here, and then it will be darker area. Okay? So basically, well, this is the best shot, right? You kind of get the idea. But for example, uh, this area, yeah, you see my mouse. This area is a little bit too dark. That's where you need that spot which you have in front, left. That's where you need the spot to highlight this area with very small spot. Guys, I see that many of you 
Well, it's it's understandable. We don't have uh, similar, the same, I mean, same uh, lighting and light modifiers, and uh, it's very hard sometimes. But try to do more do-it-yourself stuff. If you need have need to have a snoot, create that snoot. Grab a black paper, create a tube, uh, cover it with your light or just a cone. You know, if you like, if your light is that big, the reflector, have a cone. From a black paper, and it will be that kind of spot at the end, right? And you can always point it to the right direction. Honeycomb grids. Invest in the lighting, in light modifiers, not even in the light modifiers. Whatever is behind that, uh, sorry, not in the light, but in the light modifier. We don't care what kind of light, is it flash or, or um, continuous light, but we need to make sure that we can modify it the way we want. So the light modifier is very important. Well, they make our life easier, okay? So, they did a good job, uh, but like I said, for for most of us. Oh, yeah, actually good, good, good job here, I see. So, I kind of, I didn't uh, look through all the build-up. Yeah, this is, looks much better to me. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Camera is opposite side. Well, it would look better if camera would be talking about this last uh, lighting setup shot the camera should be on our side right strip boxes and boxes like this and that light which you have uh, just in front of us it should be uh, with some snoot or well whatever create spot is from this side so you see what, what how I would approach it okay more dramatic light more shadows more bright areas that's the key. It's very easy to shoot flat, guys. It's very easy. You have one big soft box, you put it somewhere on the side, let's say 45 degree, to anything texture it, you fire it, you have another reflector from other side, and boom, you have the shot. You don't need to do all this crazy stuff to create, uh, well, most of the shots I've seen. This is actually good in this case shot like this you don't need to have all this you have just one big softbox and boom you'll have all these highlights and everything but to create that kind of gradation that's where you need that's why you need the strip boxes you know a little snoots and uh, other modifiers and by the way that's talking about how to shoot this most of commercial photographers who just you know shoot for um, very non-expensive uh, clients hundreds of those items catalog style they probably work, work like this they have some Maybe even like a lighting cube, you know, tent. They put item, they shoot. It looks all flat, but well, everybody happy because, well, it's it's a cheap job, and uh, you can get there if you're not get there yet. But will you do this for years? Will you like doing this? Just just think about it. I always kind of thinking if uh, photography is my passion, do I really want to kill the passion and start, you know, making money by doing every day? You know, hundreds of hundreds of those items. That's probably not what you like, too, right? And uh, for me, the answer was, I will create very artistic, very uh, dramatic look for any pro product I shoot. I won't take, well, I will take hundreds of them, but my price will be high enough to, you know, to separate me from other photographers who can shoot just in light box, flat images. Okay, so... If you will think this kind of this way, eventually you'll find your clients. You will build your portfolio with nice images which won't look as like from any store catalog, cheap store catalog. Okay. So that's what I'm kind of trying <laughs> to explain. Alrighty, Peter. Let's see what you got. I love the colors. I love the colors. Uh, well, that's crazy shoe pink and green <laughs> nice you see Peter did a nice job here Peter did uh, dramatic look we have highlights we have the dream light and you see the subject is really textured and we have this nice highlight on this one we still have to see all the texture uh, on that uh, left one on the right one though it's a little bit too much you see the light is uh, kind of fun but I don't know can we let me see can we make it a little bit 
darker here. I'm not sure if it's hello. Okay, if it's possible or not. But anyway, let's try. So, just simple dodge and burn, for example. Even though there is a better technique, I don't know. Did I show it to you or not? Let's say we have this layer. Oh, it's not visible. So let me move it so you'll see what I'm doing here. Okay. So we have this layer. Let's say we don't have any this one. And I create adjustment levels which are levels. Oh, one second, I think it should be done like this. Okay. So levels, and then I can decrease brightness. Well, how do you decrease brightness of this stuff? Okay, something like this. I'm interested only in this in the right shoe right part of it right side of it right okay we got these levels uh, then we do image uh, or layer invert or command i right and then uh, i use just a brush to i can go always low opacity right and i i can always go and we'll try to make it a little bit darker you see, it's kind of picking up through this layer. It's the same as Dodge and Burn technique, but the cool thing that on Dodge and Burn you did it once, and uh, if you don't do it right, the only way to redo it to redo it again. And here you can always go and uh, adjust this layer levels again, right? You see, and it's kind of cool it's like creating a mask basically creating a mask so looking at this or this I would probably go somewhere like that okay because it was a little bit too bright so let me see what next so Peter great stuff uh, just a little bit more expo overexposure here and I don't know where did you consider to put a uh, spot behind it just thinking about it, maybe cool thing to do. Okay. Already, uh, this shoe, <laughs> that's cool when they, you know, like going outside of the frame because of this white. Uh, by the way, you can create completely white that piece because it's a little bit not white and it will be really cool. And uh, talking about lighting, it's good. I would imagine how it will really cool looking when it would be a new shoe you know without all those uh, wrinkles uh, but again you probably use some large soft boxes oh yeah yeah you use all the stuff well you do crazy crazy job with um, do-it-yourself light modifiers but for these guys I would I wouldn't do the same lighting setup as for this because uh, glossy stuff we need to shoot a little bit different. Well, it's it's fine to do it like this, but like I said, uh, to add more dramatic look, we can have um, them a little bit different. We may need more like rim light and then just dark area and then again more like rim light, so it's like really narrow strip boxes on the both sides. But that's it's nice like this. Yeah, and here they too too bright. You kind of killed uh, the idea. It's, it's black leather. You have a lot of highlights and it's too much. It's for glossy stuff. Uh, it's it's advanced. I, I would call it advanced. I would be glad to help you guys, but well, I posted uh, the the lesson how to shoot, you know, glossy shoes on the pro corner. And well, if you really really interested in it, I, I think it's uh, well, it's not a big deal to invest to to check what's going on there. <laughs> okay, so this is on white. And uh, you see, you kind of killed a little bit uh, the age, and it was probably too much light. So I would probably try to add, you know, black screens from both sides as close as possible to the subject without uh, being in the frame, and it will kind of still be, you know, on overexposed background. You can have a less spill uh, of the on the side. That's one the idea of how to shoot, you know, 
on a completely white background. We highlight in background as much as possible, and then we add black screens and put our subject. And black screens actually behind the subject, so they blocking the light which coming from sides of the background. Because white background, if it's wide enough, the sides of that white background start hitting the subject as we see here, and kind of killing that edge, overexposing the edge of the subject. When we cut them, cut those reflections with black screens, or just have a really narrow background, it will do the same. It will kind of, it will look better, okay? It will eliminate these highlights. But it's nice. Okay, so we're done with Peter. Thank you. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, burned. Let's see. Well, one second. Did we already talk about? Is it the second shot? Yes, burn. We already have. <laughs> so you kind of you did second shot because well, looks like we have too much time. <laughs> well, it's great. It's great. Uh, great, you did it. I obviously, I, I, I just love when you do more and uh, well, more shots and you kind of rethink and stuff you do. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, the background is good, but I don't see again. It's too dark. Uh, you know, burn. It's either your monitor is too bright that you kind of adjust it, or when you should tether it. If you should tether it, uh, maybe you kind of don't evaluate it but it's it's too dark somehow it gets too dark I don't see where the shoe starts and where the background starts and what the difference between especially this area right so for stuff like this rim light where is your rim light you forgot about rim light we need to see the age of our shoe because it's black background it's very important to have rim light when we shoot in black background on the white background it's fine right on the black, we need the separation. Uh, here, the specular highlights doesn't look right. Again, I have posted uh, on Pro Corner. If you're really interested, you can you can check it out. Uh, in general, you need to use strip boxes behind uh, on both sides behind the subject to create to create rim lights, and be very very careful about reflections. Always think what kind of reflections you're getting. Uh, start thinking about using diffusers because when we come to shooting reflective subject regardless of is it jewelry or shoe we always need to start thinking oh maybe there is a time to get diffuser involved because reflective surface will reflect one to one I would say almost like the the light source and when we see uh, some crazies of box or whatever here it's not doesn't look right and it obviously placement is not good talking about the center of the shoe again rim light rim light we don't have rim light we have edge here but it's not rim light and this is cool 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 <laughs> shoe <laughs> where you get them <laughs> it's really cool and you know what the sexiest part of the shoe is uh that i'm not sure how it's in english in russian it's kabluk but it's a pin or whatever and you know it's sexist, and I didn't see it all the way at the bottom. It's, you have that nice gradient there, and somehow you get the second one uh, blocking it. So it's probably compositionally not really best idea to put them. And again, we have uh, imagined that we would have some kind of that reflection gradients on this part of the shoe of the bottom. It would be really cool. Again, it's kind of creative, and uh, it will be really really tough to do this with the light you have, I mean with the uh, umbrellas because for this kind of uh, very precise job you need to have strip boxes, you need to have snoots and you need to be able to create, uh, you know, gradients using those strip boxes or snoots on large diffusers uh, stuff like uh, umbrella is great for, you know, shooting portraits but for product photography it's, it's really hard, it's, it's tough to get something you know precise it's more like you know big I don't know shrapnel gun which you know throws hundreds little bullets all around there is no preciseness in this okay ok 
Окей. Джоэл. Асам. Let me see. So, Joel, uh, this shot. Whoa, man! Nice. I'm <laughs> looking at your uh, lighting setup. That's cool. That's cool, and uh, they look nice. They look nice and clean. Um, maybe a little bit. We lost the texture somehow. Maybe because of sharpness, sharpening for the web, or maybe that's how it appears in the forum. But let's kind of not concentrate on this now. I mean, not because it may be the issue just a web version of this image but in general uh, there is not enough those highlights and dark areas look at the top of the shoe you see we have some highlights we have bright area then it comes comes to dark and kind of this part I was talking about oops I'm talking about this part right no not even this it looks cool but the rest is flat you see there is not much transition again maybe we can uh, always use dodge and burn instead of the lighting oops but i really want to see these areas much brighter talking about these areas right you need to have lights behind behind on the sides but behind the subjects okay so well don't look at the background it will look crazy but the idea is to have and this area to be darker right to be darker somewhere and then we need to have it brighter again on here right so it won't look flat. You see, I did little, but at least it's kind of it gives a shape. There is a shape of the the volume of the shoe. Here it's just well, it's actually kind of opposite. I don't know why it's brighter here and dark uh, there. We can go opposite. Yeah, we can have brighter area. In the middle of the shoe and then comes to both dark areas it's usually fine when we shoot on the white background because well it's like bright and then darker and then white background if you shoot on dark background have ages dark well it may be fine again if you kind of implement it right way but uh, usually uh, the simplest way to get a dramatic look is to do opposite brighter uh, ages and then darker middle if you shoot on dark background so Joel you, you know stuff like this that's what you need to do I like the spot, but you see it's a little bit bright over here, and I think it's just too small. If you would create a little bit uh, bigger, so it will cover this kind of area, it will be better. Okay? I like reflection though. And everything is nice and clean, which is cool. Yeah, you have too many... Too many ref reflectors, and the boxes are just too large and uh, they far from being strip boxes and that's why you have you know that kind of flat look cover cover your soft boxes create strip boxes from them okay yeah joel same here pretty much the same here uh, <coughs> same ideas i think i had somewhere your shoe right where I kind of adjusted I create brighter and dark and then brighter again you see what I did on your shot it's, uh, it's a little bit flat and it's flat because of uh, the lighting setup you have big soft boxes well there is uh, this is probably strip box right but this is soft box and it's still been in front of the subject put them behind on both sides a little bit behind and see what happens Okay, and if the front is too dark, put some uh, reflector. Okay. Already Deb Deb submitted nice images. Uh, cool. This you see it's a little bit glossy, 
and uh, we get some nice uh, highlights, which is fine. Uh, again, a little bit flat depth. It's a little bit flat, especially this one. You see, they look completely flat. Really, they look look too dark for the white background, right? It's supposed to be. I think it's kind of white. Uh, um, well, it's white material, right? And it's too dark here. It doesn't look right. It's not representing product, so it can be really bright even on bright background. And uh, well, this nice. You see, we have some gradients, but again, we don't see age. It's uh, it's lo lo we lose the shoe in some areas. You see, talking about this little. That's where we have highlights, and that's what the when we see the separation from the background, and we losing separation over here and here, and it's it's never good. And I don't know why you guys putting them this way. Uh, yeah, maybe if at least rotate your right shoe to to point a little bit to the camera not like this you know just leave it like that okay without editing yeah a little bit too flat a little bit too flat i would i would do the same and especially for more glossier stuff it's even more you know you need even sharper light and uh, more narrow strip boxes and things like this yeah, it's hard to see. You have only one, two, two, three boxes. No, three. Yep. You see the angle of the shoe, and you have three boxes to be still in front. Maybe you need to move it a little bit towards the background, just to see what will happen. And again, I'm not sure what kind of spot it's, this one is throwing. Maybe it's highlighting everything. There might be spot like this big, and it basically kills all the you know, gradation between uh, dark and bright. Okay. Yep, and camera from there. Yeah, you see, you oh, you guys uh, put this a little bit in front, too much on the front, especially this angle of three boxes. More drama. We need more drama. <laughs> okay. And Joel, yeah, one more. This completely glossy. That's nice. That's nice. I'm not really sure uh, compositionally. Maybe you know, move this uh, box somewhere else a little bit to separate this shoe from the box. I like this one. Yeah, it has highlights. It has dark area. It has highlights. Highlights from other. It has a rim light. You see, it looks now sexy, especially this one. This is too. I mean, good too, but uh, because of this, uh, you know, box, maybe it somehow, somehow get lost a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's it's very good job. Yeah, in terms of lighting, uh, I like it. In terms of composition, not really sure, especially that you know, completely black background. Imagine this kind of uh, bokeh kind of uh, blurred um, mm, sparks or lights over there, some kind of like Christmas tree, you know, not Christmas tree, but the idea. Uh, it will give some kind of uh, you know celebration type of mood from the shot, right? Because it was a present. It definitely was a present. So some highlights, my, you know, blurred highlights, may add some interesting look. And you see the background comes very close to the separation between the ground. Gets too close to separation where, where the boxes ends. And it's kind of not good, right? You kind of need to separate them more. So box go up or maybe down, I don't know. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, so I, I really like uh, what you did and uh, I enjoyed reviewing it. You see, always try to to think what uh, the main idea, the main uh, you know goal when you shoot uh, any product, like the shoe, textured shoe. Always think textured. So we need to show you know all those um, how we show texture with sharp light, right? So sharp light, more sharp light. It looked a little bit flat, or I mean, maybe I um, got lights a little bit too much in the front, so it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't show really texture, and that, and we lost some drama. Always think this way. What kind of look you're trying to achieve in general? So if you want to more dramatic look, think about placing lights behind, and uh, more narrow lights, less diffuse lights. If let's say we should usually we should usually we go opposite, we need some diffuse and nice light to have uh, you know on the metal on, or on glossy parts. So um, just you know ideas for you. 
Thank you, and uh, let's have a discussion. I'm not sure about this week. I'll post it. I'll post when we have discussion. I just need to look at my schedule. Uh, we're going to have Google Hangout, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be uh, glad to answer. Okay? Awesome. So, talk to you later, guys. Thank you. Bye.